Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. So for today's video, um, well, I should really say for this week's video, this month video, who knows, um, I'm going to be demonstrating um, a running a backup process on the cloud. So basically, um, I've been just finishing my backups and written a few articles and videos about this whole process. Um, but one big repository that people care about, I think, is Gmail and G Suite. Um, so in terms of getting your data out from Google so that it's not just held, I mean, there's a few reasons for this. Firstly, um, anything in Google or G Suite is on is in the cloud already. So you might be wondering, what's the point of back? Do I need to back up a cloud? And you can read various opinions about this. The orthodox approach is that you should back up cloud data, um, ideally to two sources. One of those would be a local source, and one of those that could be a you know, network attached uh, storage system in NES, it could be a local server, um, you know, uh, whatever, it could just be on your computer and that you should also back it up to another cloud. Um, so yes, it is very, very unlikely that, for example, Google is going to, uh, you know, go out of business or whatever, uh, or lose your data overnight, although it theoretically could happen. Um, but it's more, you know, you might have something like an accidental deletion, and this is something I have seen before in which people delete accidentally either their entire Google Drive or a critical folder and uh, somehow also manage to delete that from the trash bin and no Google does not by default have this built-in elaborate backup functionality you know with uh, different restore points you can roll back to it doesn't have that and it's your responsibility to protect your data so that's another point about cloud backups is that the onus is uh, actually on you the user and if you read the fine the fine print of a lot of these cloud services you might be surprised to see that's actually the case that the clouds cloud providers actually do not take responsibility for backing up your data even though they do um, but that it's your job so this is Google takeout is the is the starting point for this process for getting your data out of Google out of the Google ecosystem I would say so basically there's a lot of different apps located there it's not a backup tool that should be pointed out what I'm doing here is creating a last resort backup in the cloud and that sounds like a contradiction but it's not itself a backup tool um, there are backup tools if you look for you know G Suite to S3 backup for example you can find a lot of uh, cloud to cloud providers uh, for example I'm just trying to find familiar names here MSP 360 there's many more than that that actually queue backup that actually provide the service um, that's different. That's backing up G Suite and it's backing up, uh, you know, certain aspects for the whole, um, for the whole G Suite account. So it can be mo typically multi-users and typically not focused on the kind of stuff Google Takeout does, which is everything a user generates. Um, so if you're one person trying to extract your data, this is actually, I think, the better source. A G Suite uh, to AWS S3, for example, might just be taking you know, from from for an administrator to take out everybody's mailbox, everybody's Google Drive, everybody's contacts and put those into backups. They're not necessarily going to be interested in getting out stuff like your Google Play movies and TV preferences. Uh, you know, so this gets everything, every single Google service. Now you can e you can either choose to back up everything, that's a default option, or you can just go for specific serv services like for example Chrome. And even within each service, you can select just exactly what you want. So it's actually very, very granular. Um, what I'm going to do for the purpose of simplicity is just to go for everything. I'm not actually going to generate this takeout because to get this video prepared, uh, I have already gone ahead and done that on this. And this is just a Gmail account. It's just a demonstration Gmail I've set up for making a few videos like this. So um, you don't need to have G Suite to access this takeout function. And I do recommend um, that you do it at least occasionally. Uh, if if occasionally is only like me, I only do this once a year. Um, it's just to really make sure that uh, my Google, all my YouTube videos, all my Google Drive, well, like Google Drive I do more regularly, but my Google Contacts, my bookmarks, that it's not solely dependent upon Google. Uh, that if Google were taken out of the picture, for whatever reason, I, sc I screwed up, I deleted, or they just lost data, my data would still be somewhere else and from another location, another cloud. I could go about restoring it on a different platform or Google itself. Um, so basically, now what you can do, and you you might be wondering why I just wouldn't do a, uh, a takeout to Google Drive because they do give you this option and then run run it cloud to cloud from our clone. Uh, you could do that, but for the purpose of this video, I had to do this process last night, the regular email option. 
uh, because I had done too many takeouts and uh, uh, this this uh, method of just firing up an EC2 instance and doing cloud to cloud has got a lot more applicability than just doing Google Takeouts. So I'm going to show it that way for this video for that reason. Um, now you can I typically will generate a TGZ file uh, if you're using Linux. It should this should be pointed out uh, like like I am using it. Um, you can store up to 50 gigabytes in one TGZ archive. So there's no reason if you're using Linux not to take advantage of that and use zip. If you're using Windows, then zip is easier because you don't need to hassle about opening up a TGC file. So then you click on the export button. So I've already gone through this process. Uh, you will get two emails. One is to say that your, uh, your takeout's been requested and that generates immediately. That's how you know it's running, by the way. Um, if, it, if you do not get that email, and I just was on to G Suite support last night for about 30 minutes, um, they weren't very, uh, I, I'll, 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 I'll try to be politically correct. We, we did not succeed in resolving the issue. Um, and you know, I kind of knew that was a case that it wasn't, they weren't generating because I didn't get this. So you get this straight away. And then you get this. So basically, I'm not going to download this archive on my local here. I'm going to uh, do that in the EC2 instance and do do this cloud to cloud. So let us move on to the next step. AWS have put together some useful documentation about uh, installing a GUI onto an EC2 instance. So this is what I read through last night um, in order to make sure I had everything on my local machine to get up and running. Um, so you can find an AMI, an Amazon machine image that actually has a desktop installed. So you don't need to go through the process, the step they have listed out here of installing Mate or you know some other desktop. And they have everything. You can go for Unity or you can go for LXDE, which this is this machine is LXDE. Um, but they there is an uh, Amazon Linux 2 machine ready to roll in EC2 which uh, which already has the desktop. So you don't need to do that. What, what you do need to do is make sure you have Tiger VNC, uh, a Tiger VNC client installed on your local machine. So um, if I just bring across this screen, I just downloaded this. So I'm just gonna um, move this into my programs directory, type VNC. Um, I think I installed the wrong one. So it's Tiger VNC, uh, oops. Tiger VNC and just extract this, blow this up here. And now I have Tiger VNC and uh, this is it, the executables here. Just give that a second to open and I'm ready now to connect once I can establish a connection to the EC2 instance. So I'd recommend just getting that ready uh, before you actually fire up EC2. You know, EC2 does have an hourly running cost. It's tiny, so there, you know, you don't need to skimp about keeping it running for the shortest possible time period. Um, I'm just recommending this as a workflow so that everything everything is ready after EC2 is uh, is running. Okay, so I've logged into AWS here into the management console. Um, as you can see, I'm in the North Virginia region here. Now it's important if you're trying to make sure that you don't have, um, you know, you don't leave um, EC2 instances that you only need once every six months running. Um, you might check and then see you're still getting billed. So just make sure that you just realize that you can toggle uh, the region, the AWS region you're in here, in here. So I only do my EC2 instances in uh, North Virginia, which is US East 1, that region. Um, so I'm just at the first EC2 screen here, didn't do anything besides, you know, go down to the services drop down and go into EC2. Um, and I simply, search for desktop uh, so that I would not have to install one. Um, in AWS Marketplace and Community AMIs, you'll find many, 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 many more options, uh, including ones with different desktop environments, uh, DEs for Linux. Made is fine. It's a fairly lightweight desktop environment, uh, so it doesn't take too many resources. So that's fine. So I just went for went for this. And then you then you choose. Now, this is important because uh, you should look at how big your takeout is. So the one I have done should be very, very small. It's tiny. It's 2.3 megabytes. So, um, you know, I could do this for my local in a second, but the one I did last night was over 50 gigabytes and at my upload speed of two megabytes per second, megabit, megabits per second, the time estimate was like three days. And I did this in about 30 minutes on EC2. 
So just ignore the fact that it's tiny. This will run almost instantaneously uh, on the connection. So basically, uh, you know, you're looking at your at your storage here. Um, so you want to find something that is going to fit. So you can either go for EBS, uh, Elastic Bucket Storage, or you can go for an SSD size. So for example, I was running an uh, I was running a um, downloading a 50 gigabyte uh, takeout. So I chose to start off with a 75 gigabyte SSD and the connection speed is given here as well so if it's a particularly big file uh, you can see network performance the rate of data transfer up to 5 gigabits up to 20 10 uh, this is so you know if it's particularly big you want to uh, choose an instance type uh, which is going to give you some kind of a reasonable upload speed so the next thing you're going to do after selecting the type is you're going to need to connect, uh, create a connection key. Um, so I'm just going to say, I'm going to call this key demo account. Um, it's a new key pair and I'm going to download this and put this on my desktop. So it's giving me uh, a key file uh, ending in PEM demo account dot PEM. Uh, and I'm going to just put this onto my desktop and I'm just seeing I think ah, it's gone into downloads I'm just going to move that to my desktop and that'll allow me to connect so we're now initiating the launch of this instance over here and I just moved the connection key onto my desktop um, and you can see that it's currently initializing so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my terminal ready uh, in order to connect to it while this has been going on, I've logged into my uh, Backblaze account over here, um, and you can see the the bucket uh, here. So what I've done, I've created a bucket called Demo Bucket Dr. So I'm going to just take down a few details uh, using a using any kind of text editor, uh, a notepad of some sorts, uh, if I can find one. So I'm going to use Kate. So just take down a few details here, and obviously if you're doing this on an ongoing basis I would be saving these into something like LastPass or so uh, just you know for B2 just you want to put down your bucket name um, and you're going to create credentials um, an app key for uh, for our clone running our clone running in the cloud so you want your app key and your secret key and just uh, create though I'm going to create those now and just uh, copy those over onto my uh, notepad here Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a key for our clone in, uh, in Backblaze B2. Now, obviously, if you're using AWS S3, um, you're going to be running um, within uh, the AWS ecosystem. So uh, you'll have a little bit less clicking around to do, but it's obviously a comparable process. So um, I'm now going to go ahead and connect. Just going to move this over here. And I'm going to connect into my EC2 instance. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're on the desktop firstly, because that's where I saved the... Uh, the key file and you can see it just lets you kind of copy and paste uh, now I know that this is gonna throw up a problem I think it uh, the username in this example uh, so SSH minus I and this is where you tell it where the key file is uh, mine is demo so I'm just I could have just actually removed the um, the double brackets um, and it's not root, it's EC, EC, ECT user. You can actually, I'll just show you, you can do this and uh, it'll tell you anyway what the actual uh, username is. Uh, so, one moment. So, I just uh, quickly realized that I needed to just give, so I'm just going to change the permissions on the key file uh, to 600 um, onto demo. So just follow, follow the documentation. Uh, I forgot to do that step. Um, and then you're going to connect. I'm just going to connect firstly. And this will tell you that it's EC2. Um, so just change the username to what it is. ECT, EC2 user at the endpoint. OK, now we have a connection. Um, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, start the uh, VNC connection as well. So I'm keeping two connections open, the, S the direct SSH tunnel and also at the same time establishing the VNC connection. I'm doing that just so that I can quickly uh, run commands over the terminal. And I'm actually going to go ahead and run one now just so that our R clone's ready. So it's sudo yum install R clone. Now I'm installing R clone onto my EC2 instance. And you can see that it's uh, picked it up from the repositories, eight megabytes. Uh, and just 
for Ubuntu users, it's uh, sudo yum on Amazon Linux, just to remind. So that's installed. So when I actually get in now, it's going to be the package is going to be ready there for us. So again, following the the AWS documentation here about installing a GUI in EC2, uh, I'm just copying this command here. It's going to start the VNC and start a local process and port. 5901 so obviously we need to modify this command a tiny bit uh, the key file we're on the desktop so we don't need to it can be just uh, we don't need to give the relative path it is simply demo account dot pem that is the correct username ect user uh, and the instance ip uh, is uh, here we go this is the host name here so just going to copy that into the terminal uh, ec2 user at and just backspace through this and just copy that and takes about a second and now we can confirm um, that we have that connection made um, here and now we will need to uh, start up the and remember it's already installed um, the the server here vm server VNC server one. So this will start VNC server um, after we install the package. So uh, VNC server one. Uh, I already have it running. So now we need to just create a password for it. So I'm just typing in and confirming a password. Okay, so now you can also the I'm just again following the documentation you can have this so that it runs if you're reusing this instance so that will run on boot um, I just use this instance for my yearly job and then got rid of it last night so um, you, and you have to check for storage costs as well so even if you stop an EC2 instance you need to make sure that the attached storage uh, there's ways to put that into an archive but if you're only using it once a year it probably just makes sense to start a new EC2 instance uh, and terminate it after you're finished running so we've gone through this and now we need to uh, just connect locally. So I've just dragged across my VNC viewer. So just remember, we've just started VNC server on the EC2 instance and now we need to connect. So sorry, missing an L there. Localhost one. Now this is, this is, uh, this is such, and we're not specifying the port because we've already, um, we have already started the connection with this command over port 5901 on the local host. Um, so we just need to enter the passwords and the moment of truth, it has worked. So this is our EC2 instance um, and we have our clone running. So I'm just gonna make this full screen here. This is the final step of the process. So basically what we could do now is if you just type our clone in here, we can see that the package is installed and we're getting the uh, just the man page over there. So what I, what I did last night um, is as follows, and this remember was for a 50 gigabyte uh, takeout as opposed to two megabyte one. Just navigate to Google takeouts. I like to also test, um, just see how quick this connection is as well. If I want to get an idea for how long pushing it up through our cloud is going to take so you can actually just run and again don't forget I'm this is actually all in the uh, EC2 instance here in a virtual desktop um, it's kind of cool you can just run it as if you were just doing it on your local computer and you can see it's picked up the the EC2 instances IP and Amazon as data center now notice that the download speed is nothing particularly breathtaking but wait till you see the uh, the upload speed on even a fairly uh, you know not spectacular uh, connection over here So it's 400, in the region of 400 megabits per second coming down a small bit. So I'm just gonna get rid of that because um, one thing, unless you install a, a instance type with a lot of RAM, uh, it can struggle to do even basic things. So I just kind of use, use it as user browser as lightly as possible with as with this few tabs. Um, so Google Takeouts, and I'm just gonna sign in quickly to the demo account. So I've just gone through the verification and obviously because um, if you're doing this, you're signing in through a different, uh, totally different IP address, it's going to trigger Google security mechanisms. Um, I had to just quickly give my recovery email address and I got through last night because I'm on two, two factor authentication. I needed to, you know, do the automated call thing several times over. In fact, a bit of a pain. 
So our very, very small backup uh, takeout is here, but there's no reason this couldn't be a big takeout. Uh, and again, we're getting some kind of messy stuff, so I'll just go through this quickly and uh, get the file onto the desktop. Okay, so we passed through that, and um, our takeout file is downloaded there, so we just need to check. This is actually Chromium. We just need to check where that went. Um, to, based on the default, download, probably, uh, probably download. Downloads. Yeah, downloads. So um, let's just go into our terminal here. And let's just jump into the downloads folder, and there is our takeout file. Okay, so now we want now we need to configure um, our remote uh, directory in EC in uh, sorry in Arclone. I'm just gonna head and delete us uh, and uh, close down the browser. Just remember what I said about the the resources and some of these EC2 instances are not you know if you're going for light machine, it's not really not really designed to be using a a virtual desktop like this. Uh, our, so it's our clone minus minus uh, tac tac config. Some people call it tac tac. Um, flag me as arguments. So just a small er error in my syntax. I just quickly checked the man page. Um, I need to update my post. Actually, there's no. Uh, it's just our clone config. So um, it asks you for your remote. So and is for a new remote. Um, I'm going to call this B just B2 because there's only going to be one now. You get this big list of different um, different storage types here and you just need to see which number yours is. Uh, of course you can check this online as well. Backblaze B2 is 5 so put in the number of the storage type of your remote and this is where you put in um, so I'm just going to bring in the data that I saved here uh, so we can see what the key ID is. I'm just going to copy this into the terminal. Uh, I'm going to try to copy this into the terminal again. We should have two-way pasting here. There we go. And copy in the secret key, the application key, the second. This is a. So again, if you're using S3, it's going to be a similar similar process. So that just didn't catch. I'm just going to do this a little bit more manually. And again, uh, there we go. Paste and just verify that's correct. Um, and you can just go through, you know, the various options. Uh, I don't need to go into the advanced config and uh, that's fine. So I've now created that uh, repository in our clone. And you can also quit, just uh, Q is to quit. So um, now we are ready to run the final bit of this. Now just to remind what is the novelty of what I'm doing at the moment, it's not on my local desktop, I'm running on an EC2 instance and therefore this is a cloud to cloud backup. Um, it could be a direct cloud to cloud backup if you were simply using, you could use our, our clone on your local and just move between the two. Um, but if you go, you know, if you need for whatever reason to have a GUI to pull down a takeout, uh, you know, that can't be in your, in your Google Drive or, you know, something else, um, then this is, uh, this is an approach that you can use. So it is uh, our clone sync. I'm just going to actually add the ver verbosity operator there and just start typing and then uh, hit the tab to fill that out for takeout um, and then we are putting in our remote um, so it was we call it B2 our bucket name is uh, demo bucket DR And I'm just going to leave that at the root of the directory. So there you go. Uh, it's already run. And you can see we moved up 2.3 um, megabytes in 2.3 seconds. So that was almost instantaneous. So I'm in the back Blaze web UI in my second screen. So I'm just going to bring that over. And uh, as you can see, um, in demo bucket DR, the takeout file, uh, 2.4 megabytes is there. And I just did that quickly to verify that indeed uh, the upload had processed successfully. So that's how you do it. Um, firing up EC2, you could use a VPS as well. 
Um, actually, if you're using EC2, uh, it'll work out a lot cheaper. It's just a lot easier. Um, I was thinking about doing a VPS, and then I thought, if I already have AWS, why not just fire up an EC2 instance and uh, set up our, our clone in a second and run stuff across. Um, so this has, you know, broad application um, in terms of if you're doing cloud cloud to cloud backups, uh, they can be done via our, our clone uh, on your local thing. But if you have the ability to uh, to virtualize a desktop and, you know, interface with, uh, you know, browser based user interfaces, um, it just opens up more possibilities and then run our clone on the uh, on the EC2 itself and just push up to the, to the cloud. Uh, you will be able to benefit from an uplink, an upload speed of, you know, typically above 450 megabits per second. So an awful, awful lot faster than doing it locally. So my 50 gigabyte uh, upload took about 30 minutes yesterday at Google Takeout on our clone, on the on our clone running on EC2 versus it would have taken, I think the estimate was almost three days uh, if I had done that, uh, pushed it up just from my local machine. So, um, Thank you for checking out the video. If you do want to get in touch uh, for whatever reason, uh, this is my website, danielroso.co.il. Um, I'd love to, you know, talk to, hear your feedback, or uh, you know, anyone else in the whole backup realm that wants to discuss this. Um, I'd be always, always, well, always willing to chat. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.